walked up to Corey Feldman backstage and I said, hi, I'm Lauren O'Neill Q101, would love to handle you. Yes, she and, did um, She did offer to handle me, it's true. So. And so here I am being here handled. <laughs> I'm being, luckily not manhandled, but handled nonetheless. I'll be gentle, I promise. I think we handled the stage pretty well. Okay, can I just say that Corey Feldman <laughs> had the most crowd surfers at Riot Fest yet. It was unbelievable, and I was lucky enough to be in the pit and witness the show. Uh, it's it's amazing. Not only that, but I was told now by the head of publicity and the head of uh, the director of the festival, I guess, that that was the most, and the person, the photographer for Rivas, they said that was the most people in 10 years that they've been doing this that they've ever had on the side stage during the day. Yep, I believe it. And I would say the most gold that has ever been worn by one person <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, well, That's got to be a record also. Thanks. I noticed your cell phone is gold also. That's right. I, like, I have a thing. If you notice when we're on tour, I also carry a gold mic. Okay. Everything's gold. But you know what? I, love I don't that. wear any jewelry. Isn't that weird, right? You don't need to. I do to. have my 22. I got my gold 22. So what I is the... I used to have the... my big bling ring. I had like a bling ring, but it, it got stolen. So ever since it was stolen, I'm like, whatever. Okay. Who would steal Corey Feldman's bling ring? No, what I'm saying? Where do we, where do we lose it? Can we... Um, In my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you invited it, somebody like, over. Yeah, creeps. A seedy creeps. character. Creeps seedy sleazy people that would come into somebody's home under the guise of friendship and steal a beloved artifact given to me by my dear late grandfather by the way hopefully whoever you are that stole this you're listening and you can feel gobs and gobs and goops of of guilt over this because guess what it was a very sentimental and you know what what if i came into your house and i stole your sentimental token of appreciation between you and a beloved dear loved one who raised you that's no longer with us you would be crushed and devastated but you know what you're not the person that's watching this the rest of you are so i want to do this show for you guys and not for that one loser right forget right. you yeah forget that guy well anyway. i was very impressed with the show because i thought weren't you recovering from a meniscus huh. tear recovering like, i think the recovery is done it's back to yeah. uh, the hospital for me oh no, no. i've got two tears in this meniscus i've got one tear on this one so i got steroids in this one you can see how see how it's like swollen and this one's not yeah, swollen, a little bit, not, yeah. swollen not yeah so anyway i got steroids put into this one which got me up and moving for the tour and then i think i basically screwed that like three shows ago Oh, man. So, uh, but today, you know, I had to go balls out. So it was like <laughs> balls out with a meniscus torn in both knees. Not really completely the way I would have played it. But, you know, hey, ow! Oh, no! Uh, we broke Corey Feldman! Uh, but you know like what? It's all for the love of art! <laughs> Damn it! You sound like you're on my fantasy football team, I swear. Yeah! <laughs> And now I'm going to vape for your studio audience. Help yourself, sir. This is your home. Your home away from home here at Q101 backstage at Riot Fest. Don't do that. It's bad for you. So I heard a story from a Corey Feldman show where you knocked your own tooth out. You were rocking so hard. It's true. And that the fine <laughs> people at your show helped you find your the tooth. The stories so the of lore. The stories of lore. No, the legend is true. The legend is true. It was actually in Kansas City, I believe. And, uh, yeah, I, went, I ate that microphone so hard, and the tooth came right out. Oh it was a veneer, by the way. It wasn't an actual tooth. It was a veneer. Uh, so, for those who don't know, I had a little, a little overlap thing in my teeth when I was a kid. It was like, if you look at my old movies, like there yeah, was a little thing. it was adorable. No, it always bothered me. <laughs> so I was like, hey, I just want to fix that little thing. He's like, oh, no problem. We'll do veneers. And I thought... He said, oh, well, we got to shave down a little bit of your tooth. And I'm like, no problem. They'll shave down a little bit of the tooth. What's that going to do? So I figured it was a little, no big deal. You know, they're going to take off a little tooth. So all of a sudden, this thing falls off, and it's like a spike. That's all that you have left is a spike. It's a nub, and it's a spike of a nub. You're a real-life vampire, it's finally. It's gross. So anyway, <laughs> it falls out, like, boom, flies out, and it lands on the floor, and thank God, like everybody's crawling around, you know, in the front row, like they're in the front row. There's no, there's no stage. There's just a barrier. And like, they literally could have crashed through the barrier and killed me. But instead they all got on the floor and started 
trying to find the tooth. Oh my God. And the girl that found it obviously could have been like, got it, peace out, I'm gonna go make a million dollars, eBay. you know, and been <laughs> gone. But instead, she was a, a gentlewoman. I don't know how you say that. She yeah, was a, she was a lady, works. me lady, and she handed it back to me. Uh, and because right of her on. handing it back to me, the tour went on. <laughs> Think, if the if she didn't hand it back to me, I'm not going to go out there and try and sing without a tooth every night. That's crazy. Because I would have been whistling Dixie. So you know? at a Corey Feldman show, you should know there's not a splash zone. There's a you may get hit with tooth shards. <laughs> you might get hit so with anything, man. You never know what's going to come flying. So but at the end of the day, the good news is that it's all love. It's all positive energy. Like, well, that's what you're it's all not, about. Yeah. So, I mean, even though we do rock hard and even though it does get intense and crazy at a lot of our shows, it's always like a positive vibe. It's not like, hey, I'm going to kill you. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of vibe. It's more like, yeah, we love you, man. Well, you know, that's that what your whole era is right now. I mean, love left me too is arming me with love. That's right. Exactly right. So, we are an army of love armed with love. Yeah. How do it's you all arm, about the love. How do you arm yourself with love every day? You know, I'm one of those people that somehow manages to wake up in a good mood with a positive outlook for each day. Do you wake is, up high every day? No. What's the I secret? Don't. What's the secret? No, I just, you know what? Like, I could have the worst freaking day, and it's just like hell, and everything sucks, and I'm so pissed, and I go to bed, and then like, you know, I wake up the next day and I'm like, oh, okay, what's going on today? What's going to happen? You know, I just, like forget about all of it and I just go into like the next day. Like, what's going to happen? How do we make today better? Do you get a solid eight hours? Is that the secret? Never. Never. No, it's so rare that I Two get Two hours? That. I would love that, but my body <laughs> won't even allow it. Like, That's if I get true. six hours, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was great. All right, I'm ready to get home. So, <laughs> no, I usually get like four, four or five because I work so much. I'm usually working like 18 yeah. to 20 hours a day. On a whatever day? it is I'm doing, a day, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Because like, for example, I'll give you a small taste. So right before I came here to do this this tour, I was doing a network television show, which I can't tell you what it was, but they were shooting 12 hours a day. Wow. So I was shooting with them 12 hours a day and then going home to my band, which was waiting for me set up, waiting to rehearse for our last few days before leaving for tour for two months. And so like, four hours of rehearsal after the 12 hour shoot day. And then I'd have to sleep somewhere in there, yeah. right? So by the time I finally got to sleep and then I'd have to get up to get back to the studio to shoot. So I was literally working 18 hours, you know, two hours of getting back and forth and like four hours of sleep. And I did that for a whole week leading up to the, the tour launching and with a torn meniscus or two and with a, uh, a chest infection. I had a chest infection. I'm still getting over, so my voice is a little weak. You are superhuman. I, I don't know, man. I just got to keep going. <laughs> I just don't let myself quit. You know, I feel like if I stop for two seconds, my whole thing's gonna just collapse. So I just keep like, oh yeah. Did I mention I'm going through a freaking separation with my wife? So it's like uh... this is hitting the press at the same time. I'm like doing the Olympics of drama. I'm like da 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 da. Let's go do right fest. Yay! Da, 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 da. You know, so that's pretty much me well, right now. Well, you're doing fantastic. Thank if you. If no one's told you that today. Oh, God bless. Thank you. Um, do you get to Chicago Your often? pinkness is fantastic. Let me just tell you. you that. I'm loving the pink. Love the pink. It's Thank so you. perky. I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you get to Chicago often? I do. I love Chicago. Shy town baby. What do you love the most about Chicago besides q I love the Hoffmans. The, Ho the Hoffman Estates? <laughs> the guys that own it. The Hoffmans. Mark yeah. Hoffman. You know who Mark Hoffman is? Do I know Mark Hoffman? Everybody knows Mark Hoffman. Everybody does? Yeah, he used to own Excalibur. Remember that place? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of other places. Okay, but anyway, okay. Yeah. Sidebar, sidebar. He's a friend of gotcha. mine that lives here, so I come visit him. Oh. Or I used to. Anyway, but okay. I know what I really love about Chicago? It's not the Sears Tower. It's not the Great Lakes. It's not the wind. It's not the guns and the violence. No. What I really love about Chicago is rosebuds. I mentioned that on stage, I think, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I said, let's all go to, get, let's all go to rosebuds after the show and get some food. That's where we're going. Wow. You deserve a, a break and a good meal. That sounds like a jingle. <laughs> and you so, deserve a break today. I want to share with you, my girl gang, that we're up in the pit for your show. We, we coined ourselves, and feel free to use this, we have dubbed ourselves the Feld Women. 
I like it. So I like it. If you have a girl gang, if you have a girl gang going to see Corey Feldman on this tour, you are a Feld woman. You're officially part of the woman team. Part of I our like gang. It. We'll come up with like a handshake and I think all it's that strong. Stuff. I think it's very strong. Hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Do they all have to have pink hair or no? They don't. No. We take all, right. all shapes and sizes, all colors, like and it. all types. Very multiversatile. Yes. I like it. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your God busy schedule just to sit and talk crap with us. Oh, today. well, I enjoyed it so much. Appreciate you, thank buddy. Thank you for having me, and thanks for the support, and thanks for watching the show. Come Happy on Ryan back Fest. out and see us again. Do it. We're going to be all go. over the country for the next month and a half, and then we're leaving the country next year to go all over the world. So get us while you can. Do it.